Hey, what's up everyone? This is Tim Weaver with Studio4Media.com and today we're going to take a look at how to create this lighting effect on your character's face coming from a computer screen or a cell phone and it's reflecting back up onto the face and it's going to look something similar to this. And you can see there we got uh, the lights shining up on them and yeah, we'll go and get started. This is a pretty simple effect to set up and hopefully you'll learn some things through this tutorial. So right away you can see I got my scene set up here. I just have a character this just happens to be the rocket character from Guardians of the um, uh, Universe or something like that. I don't know. Anyway, so we got the this rocket guy here, and we're going to use him as our character, kind of our placeholder to, to do this effect on. Any character will work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just create a light. So go up here to Create, Lights, and I'll just do a Spotlight. Then I'm going to go to Panels. I'm going to say Look Through Selected. So now I'm looking through this light and you can see we have a ring here that's kind of showing uh, where the light is hitting, where it's focusing. And my first light, I want to be kind of pointed down on him, encapsulating the entire face, but more of a, a down angle, maybe a little bit further back. Something like this here. And I'll go to my perspective mode. Something like this. So if I render this out, you're going to see what we got so we have him lit up obviously it's a very harsh light you can see here down at the bottom uh, it cuts it off very very fast and he's fully lit and so we're gonna make some changes to this light so we can um, get something that is a little bit of a more of an effect that we want so select the light go into the attribute editor I'm gonna go ahead and make the changes to this light and I'm gonna go back through these changes and explain why it is I'm doing what I'm doing and what those effects do um, on the second light that we create. So the intensity I'm going to go ahead and take down to 0.5. The color, I'm going to do more of a gray color, more like a computer screen. The decay rate, I'm going to hit linear. Cone angle is fine. Per number angle I'll bring up to maybe uh, 40 and drop off maybe a value of 10. That might be too much. Let's do 5. We're going to render this out and see if that looks any better. So hit render and there we go. That looks a little bit better. We just want this to have kind of like a highlight some of his features. And that might be a little bit too low of an intensity, maybe a value of one to start out with. And we'll go back through and make some adjustments. So there we go. We got his face lit up at this uh, angle that we want, kind of a downward angle. And now we'll go ahead and get started with our second light. So I'll go to Create, Lights. And we'll create this other spotlight. Do the same thing here. Look through the selected. And I'm going to go ahead and do an undershot, more of where the, the computer screen or cell phone screen would be if he was holding it in his hands, if he was looking down at it. So something like this here. This one we want to be a little bit closer to his face. Go back to my perspective mode here and render this out. So we got kind of the same problem going on here as we did at the beginning of the first light, it kind of is um, jagged around the edges. Now I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here and render this out and then I'm going to save this image and we're going to use this as a reference image as we, as we start making some of these changes and you're going to see uh, the difference it makes. So I'm going to go into the attribute editor here. First thing I'm going to talk about is the intensity. Obviously that's just what it sounds like, how bright is this light. So we have an intensity of 1 right now. If we bump that up, render this out, it's obviously going to be a lot brighter. So that's kind of self-explanatory. Bring it back down to 1. Talk about this decay rate. So this light currently has no decay. That means this light will go on forever and it will be as bright as it is on the top of his nose and as bright as it is in anything in the background. If we had a building really far in the background, it would hit that building just as bright as it's hitting his face. So it's not decaying over time. But for this example and for most examples, you're going to want a light to behave realistically and have a decay rate over time. So this is a linear decay rate is what we're setting on this light. And linear decay rate means it decays. Uh, whatever's closer to it is going to be brighter than what's farther away. Um, that's true for all of the, the decay rates. Um, but what you'll notice is we have linear, quadratic, and cubic. And these are just fancy ways to say so we have quadratic here in the middle and quadratic is the 
actual scientific formula for how fast light decays in the real world. So if you set it to quadratic, that's going to be a, a, a real light. If you turn on your light or your lamp and then film something, that's how fast it's decaying in the real world. But then they give you some options. Linear is not as fast. And then cubic is, I think, twice as fast. So it decays twice as fast. Sometimes with a computer, you want to have different options. So you can mess around with those and see which one looks good for your character or for your scene. But for ours, linear is going to work just fine. Then we have the cone angle. And the cone angle is what you can use to adjust the area of the cone here. So you notice if I render this out first, we can see that along the ears here and along the nose, the nose is brighter than the light back here. Now it might be hard to see with this because it's kind of a, uh, a closer to the camera. It, we don't have anything in the background that can really show this decay rate, but if I go back and forth, you'll kind of see a little bit of a difference. So. Um, if we talk about the cone angle, if I bump this up to value of 70, you're going to notice something on your screen as well. The angle of the cone is bigger, and so it encapsulates a bigger area. Also, if we render this out, you see that now we don't have those clippings on the ears because this cone angle has gotten bigger. So, you can see that difference. And it's now getting, not chopping off the neck. It's actually going around all the way to the bottom of the neck here. We want to bring this cone angle back down to value 40. For now, we might change that just so we can talk about this penumbra angle. So this is going to do kind of like a uh, feathering effect. Um, if we apply this, if I do this to like a value of 50, you're going to notice over here my light shape. It's very harsh. You have a very um, hard cutoff. But if I bump this penumbra angle, it kind of gives you an example of what it looks like. So now it's a little bit softer. It, the brighter light's in the center. And as it goes outward, it kind of softens out. So if I render this out, you're going to see the same effect. So now, same thing, whereas this is not a harsh angle on his ear. It's actually feathered out a little bit more. And you'll see this better if I, let me turn this cone angle down, actually to a value of 20. And turn this per number angle to zero. So the slide's going to be just focused on this area right here in his face. Now if I bump this up, value of like 30 re-render this out, <clears throat> it, it's hitting the front of his face more and it's just feathering out as, as it goes on. Let me see if I can just do like a value of 10 that, so you can see it better. So it's not it's not making the, the cone angle bigger, it's just feathering out this light as it goes on and that actually looks pretty good. So you can see it kind of feathers it out, it's not really harsh along his nose. And then the lower you get, the lower of a value you get, um, the more you can still see the original circle, the original angle of the light, the cone angle. So now you can actually see, okay, here's, here's the angle up in here of where the light did cut off. But since we're feathering it out, the more you feather it out, the, the more you won't be able to see that harsh cone. So I'm going to set the cone angle back to 40, set the per number angle to a value of 20. And the drop off, I can just, we're not going to use it for this example, but I can explain what that is. Drop off is very similar to your decay rate. It kind of simulates a decay rate, um, except the decay rate um, happens along an axis. So along the axis of the light, it, it decays um, based upon that, where drop off is, it diminishes perpendicular to the light. So um, I know that probably doesn't explain much, but <laughs> um, I can I can try to bump this up here so you, maybe you can see an idea of what it looks like. Um, it's really hard to see in this example. Basically drop off, if you're not getting the, the look you want with one of these three options in your decay, you can mess around with the drop off and get something that might look a little bit better. So that's all you really need to know for that one. Okay, let's go ahead and um, talk about this light. Um, it's all set up how we want it. Maybe we want it facing down a little bit more. Yeah, we definitely want this down more. Kind of rotate it up. Facing his, his uh, chin there almost. And we'll re-render this out just to see if it's in the proper position that we want. That looks pretty good. So now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and uh, talk about these color options here. So to the right of the color options, you have this, this box here that you can hit and you can 
you can set a render node to the color of the light. And this is a really amazing thing that you can do that not a lot of people know about. Um, you can set any type of texture that you've used in the past or any type of preset texture that Maya has, like a fractal texture. You can do a grid. So if I select this grid right now and render it out, you're gonna notice he's got a grid on his face. Um, you can do so many different things with this. If I did, instead of a grid, if I did this noise, you can also have that noise on his face. It kind of gives it more of a grungy look. You can place these textures on the lights to texture your scene. Um, so really amazing things that you can get with this type of effect um, a lot of people know about. You can also apply a file to uh, the color, which is what we're going to do in this example because it gives you probably even the most options uh, attaching your own images to it. So I'm going to hit file, then we're going to open up the image name. And we have a couple different options here. All these options will be available um, in the project files. So the binary one is what I use for that example. I'll hit binary and render this out and you're going to notice that's the effect that we're getting. He's getting this binary coding along his face and if we zoom in here it gives you more of the effect that I originally showed you. So this is a really simple technique but you can get some really really cool things with it. Um, you can do some really interesting lighting using this technique and I, I can actually see now that these runs and zeros are upside down so you gotta be careful when you're using images for that so this light actually needs to be rotated um, 180 degrees so uh, let me rotate this on the z-axis 180 degrees and I'm going to have to rotate it up render this out once we reposition the camera and there they go so now the ones zeros are kind of properly faced but Something to watch out for. That's the effect that uh, that we're going for right there. Again, you can mess around with the, your secondary light. If I turn the secondary light off, just so you can get an idea of what it looks like without this. So just set the intensity to zero. That turns it off essentially. So this is the, the dramatic lighting effect. Um, without that secondary light, uh, it really doesn't, doesn't sell as good. So what you can just have it on just barely, just enough to see the rest of the facial features. Um, maybe like a value of 0.8. So there you go. Um, that, uh, that's essentially the entire tutorial here. Really simple technique that you can do a lot of, a lot of things with that not a lot of people know about. Um, some other things you can do just so you can see some of the other images. If I select this other light, one of my image settings here, I can change this to like we have this blue screen, blue screen of death. Now obviously we're going to want to change some other f settings whenever we put this one on, but this one looks, you know, really good. It's got some awesome looking uh, contrast on his eyebrows there. Maybe he's hacking into the servers at the White House or whatever. Something else that works really good is these Word documents. So uh, just put up this Word document and you can see you have to position the light a little bit more. Um, and this is where I'll kind of show you what you can do with those different angles. But you see how it's all zoomed in. It's kind of getting cut off. So I'm going to select the light. Um, if I go back to the settings here we can change this cone angle, bump it up a little bit, maybe value of 70, and now um, those words are more, they're, they're larger, more where we want them. We can we can rotate the light down a little bit, and it gets us this effect that, that we're going for. So, something like that. It's a little too close. <laughs> uh, something like this here. The words are on his face. Looks really good. Um, also, you can, you can have fun with it. I mean, you can do, I mean, honestly, your imagination is the limit. Put up the Pokemon Go there. Maybe he's trying to hack into the, the Pokemon Go server so he can catch that blue eyes white dragon that he really, really can't can't get. It's always going away. For each one of these different lights, you know, you, or d different images, you're gonna want to readjust your your angles and everything. But I mean, you get the idea. This is super super fun, awesome uh, awesome technique that can be used to do a lot of things. So hey, uh, go ahead and check out the website over at Studio 4 Media. We got a lot more tutorials. If you look at these tutorials online, these free ones, and you're like, hey man, that was really cool, but it doesn't really go that much in depth, and it's you know, uh, it's just kind of surface level. That's because uh, these are just free ones. I mean, if you want some awesome tutorials, uh, go ahead and take a look at our our website. We got amazing tutorial series. We have um, just tons and tons of videos you can break down um, that that go through 
so many different things. Uh, this is this is one of the tutorial series we have. We have individual videos that really go in depth on some more uh, amazing techniques and, and topics and that kind of stuff. So check it out uh, and see what you guys think. Thank you so much for everyone that's already signed up. We really appreciate that. Uh, really appreciate the support. And I will see you guys on the next tutorial.